surprised. We all have to do this. Don't you ever stop to wonder what happens when you flush the loo or even empty the bathtub? I mean, what did they do with it all? You know, it'd be interesting to try and find out. Can I help you? Yeah, hello. Uh, my name's George. And I just wondered, what happens to sewage? Well, you're in the right place. This is Stoke Bardol Sewage Treatment Works right. in Nottingham. It's one of Seven Trent Water Company's largest sewage treatment works. Mm -hmm. The sewage that comes here, George, comes from the city of Nottingham. Mm -hmm. And uh, on a day like today, we can be treating up to 160 million litres of sewage. If it rains, it's considerably more. Is the peak periods like, you know, say, early in the morning when everybody's going to work, or uh, evening after Coronation Street. Yes, you know, yes. It, oh yes, we can uh, we can see you know when everybody's getting up in the morning and having a shower, flushing the loo. It makes a difference. It does make a big difference. And one of the biggest problems that we have are the hundreds of cotton wool buds. Don't really oh. know why people flush those down the loo. But so you know if you live in a valley and there's a hill, how does the sewage get over the hill? Well, we have to pump, so there are various pumping stations along the route to the sewage oh, treatment works. Oh, I see. Because most sewage yeah. treatment work, they have to be located very close to a river, which is quite a low point. Yeah. So yeah. a lot of it will flow by gravity, but some does have to be pumped. Yeah. It's amazing what people will chuck down into really? the sewers. Yeah. I mean, people will put furniture, shopping trolleys. We've even had a boa constrictor. Really? Would you believe? Yes. Yeah. It's uh, quite strange what you find down in a sewer. Mm. Well, this is a screenhouse, George, where right. all the larger items that we find in the sewage is t are taken out and right. goes to a landfill site to be buried. And is it just sewage that, that comes here? Oh, well, we have all other wastewater from industry and also ah. the runoff water when it rains. Ah. Well, this is actually taking out items that won't pass through those screens, George, such as sanitary items, toilet paper, human waste. I've even just seen a whole carrot, you know, sort of being taken out there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this is so that the screenings don't lock up the pumps. Look, we've even got a whole potato. Right, well, what's this? Looks like a river. It is a river of sewage, George, really, isn't it? Yeah. Once the sewage has passed through the screenhouse and taken out all the larger items, mm. then the main flow of the sewage is then taken over to the grit channels. Um, we sweet do corn. lots of sweet corn. Yes, we do get a lot of sweet corn, and that is what we call grit as well, which you'll see it all being removed at the next stage. So this is actually where all that stuff's coming from now. And yes. What's those things there? Well, those are to slow the flow of the sewage down, George. So well, that like baffle, baffle, that's right. Yeah. Yes, yeah. exactly. And in this tank here, uh, the grit, which is. Well, the grit from the road, yeah. uh, coins, jewellery, broken glass, anything heavy like that will settle to the bottom of these tanks. Yeah. And then we have scrapers that are rotating and bringing the grit out of the tanks and then being deposited into a skip. The grit that we remove now from the sewage, plus the screenings from the screenhouse, oh, yeah. all that goes off to a landfill site where it can be safely buried and they know exactly what's been buried and where. There's a hell of a flow on this, isn't there? I mean, it's it's like is it? Certainly is good, yes. And the channels each side look there. Yes, that's to actually account for the storm overflow. When we're in storm conditions and the level of the sewage is much higher, oh, yeah. then you can imagine that the overflow goes into these channels yeah. and is taken over to the storm tanks, oh, which are over in that direction. Then yeah. when the storm's over, we can actually redirect the storm water back into the main flow of the sewage via this large oh, and it comes pipe. back through there. And then it just continues along with the flow of sewage to be treated at the next stage. You think of everything, don't you? Oh, well, we have to. <laughs> <laughs> of course, these are the storm tanks, George, but on a day like today, there's nothing in them. Well, they're massive, aren't they? They are huge, aren't they? We have two. So when there's an actual thunderstorm, these actually fill up with water? They can be they? very full, that's right, yes. Oh, and then amazing. when we can you return the water to the main flow, then we do so. I noticed there's some similar to this over there that's filled with water. There are, George. Those are the primary settlement tanks. So this is actually a full settlement tank? That's right, George. This is a primary settlement tank. We have yes. eight here. And the sewage now comes from the grit channels, the grit removal, and suspended solids will settle to the bottom. 
and lighter matter such as fats and grease will float to the surface. Well, do these things ever get emptied and somebody goes and scrapes all the stuff off the bottom and that? No, um, the scraper bridge has scrapers top and bottom. Is that the bridge? That's, That's it, across there, That's going from the centre out to the uh, to the outside. Yeah, yeah. And the scrapers are scraping off all the solids that have settled to the bottom and then all the lighter matter such as fats and grease that have um, floated to the surface yeah. and then all that is taken over to the digesters which we'll be looking at later on. Yeah. Can you see how much better the quality of the sewage yes. is now flowing over into this outer channel? It's beginning to look good isn't it? I notice there's not, not many people seem to be working around here at all. Do they get days off in loo? Oh go on with you George. <laughs> But joking apart, there are actually only about 25 people who do work on the site. Really? Everything's computerised and automated. Doesn't need many people to actually run the pumps. Well, this water looks quite clean and clear. It's, it's almost got a room, a nice smell to it. It's nice and clean, isn't it? It is, isn't it, George? Well, you see, after the primary settlement yeah. tanks, the sewage is split. Two thirds goes through the surface aeration, right. but a third actually comes through the diffused air plant. So why is it actually split? Well, we have consent levels for ammonia uh, laid down by the Environment Agency and this process uh, actually meets those requirements once the sewage has been treated in this way. But they look like giant food mixing machines, don't they, up there? That's right. This is surface aeration and those spinners are actually adding a large amount of air to the sewage. That's oh, just what the bacteria like. We're actually adding bacteria now. Oh. It's activated sludge. It's a culture of bacteria that we use to actually break down all the impurities in the sewage for us. Oh, yeah. I see, yeah. We're, in fact, giving them quite a banquet now. It's quite a feast because what the bacteria are going to do are break down all the impurities for us. So what do you do with all the sludge that you take from the primary settlement tanks then? Well, what we have to do first of all is that we have to thicken it, which we're doing in this building here, right. and then we put it into the digesters, where it stays for about 20 days. I bet it's a bit smelly, isn't it? Well, it is smelly before it goes in, but the yeah. process is designed to take away all the smell from the sludge. Oh, so what happens to all this sludge when it comes out of the digesters? Well, we actually use it on our own Stoke Bardolph estate. We inject it into the land and it acts as an extremely good fertiliser. Right. In each of the fields of the Stoke Bardolph estate is the standpipe oh, and yeah. uh, the sludge can be transported by pipeline to each of the individual standpipes where a tractor will attach a hose to the standpipe and then inject the sludge into the land. So how do you actually use the bacteria again? Well, we settle them out in final settlement tanks mm -hmm. and then we can use them all over again before sending the final effluent back to the River Trent. And as you can see here, this is the final effluent, mm. um, which is the last process, the last part of all of the treatment. And the River Trent is about a half a mile further downstream. Well, Pam, Thanks ever so much for showing me around. I really appreciate it. It's been brilliant. You're welcome, George. Have you enjoyed it? I've thoroughly enjoyed it. Good. And this water is absolutely beautiful. Yes, absolutely essential for life. Without that, we wouldn't be here, would we? No, no. Going to the toilet will never be the same again. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. Oh. <laughs>